was not the gas company, it was the gas company contractor. It wasn't. They don't do any of their own. Well, I was just wondering how they're so careful to market so we know, so we don't cut through their estimate. But when they cut through ours, maybe it wasn't evident. You're not going to get shocked by uh, cut through a sewer pipe. <laughs> okay, folks, we're going to call this meeting to order 615. If everyone could uh, stand up for an invocation pledge, please. Father, we do gather and give you thanks for this day and all that you do to help us on the city council. Guide us and direct us that we would have wisdom tonight as we transact what business is on the agenda and work on our budget. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we do not have any public comment tonight. We do have a proclamation to read. Hugh, did you want to do it at the podium for a better picture, maybe? I'll wait for you. You good? Okay, folks, if, uh, if you all saw the uh, uh, county commissioner's court, they uh, uh, did a proclamation for the paddlefish as well. So we are capitalizing on the opportunity to partner with them and do the same thing. So proclamation today is recognizing the paddlefish uh, is the official fish of Jefferson, Texas. Be it known that whereas the paddlefish is a living fossil more than 300 million years old, and whereas paddlefish are unique from any other North American fish, and that they have no scales, only a jawbone, and a paddle or a rostrum that is about one third the length of its body. And whereas paddlefish are native to Big Cypress Bayou in Marion County, though they were wiped out from their native range uh, and declared state threatened in 1977, and whereas paddlefish have been experimentally released in Big Cypress Bayou specifically from the city of Jefferson public boat ramp since 19, uh, 2014, and whereas the only paddlefish restocking in the state of Texas began in 2018, and whereas the unique habitat of the Big Cypress Bayou running through the city of Jefferson is being restored through the efforts of the United States Fish and Wildlife, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, Northeast Texas Municipal Water District, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, the Nature Conservancy, the Collins Academy, the Jeffersonian Institute, and the Caddo Lake Institute. Now, I therefore, now therefore, I, Rob Baker, Mayor of the City of Jefferson, County of Marion, State of Texas, do hereby proclaim that the paddlefish is the official fish of Jefferson, celebrating our historic towns, unique habitat, and unique wildlife. So, then I'll present this to the group who did that. And it was a uh, it was a nice little event. They released 2,500 paddlefish. About a foot long right now, but they will get up to about six feet. And we move to adjourn. If you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Not there yet. Okay, folks, a couple action items. Uh, six Alpha, consider, discuss, and approve changing the October 5th, 2022 special council meeting to a different date due to the conflict with the approved national night out event. We can just bump it a day. You know, this would be our uh, first Monday meeting for ordinances and handbook and that sort of thing. Would anyone object to move it to the Wednesday? That would be Wednesday the 6th. Actually, Actually, Tuesday is the 4th. Right. Oh, Tuesday. So Wednesday would be the 5th. So it is changing the October 4th to October 5th. Yeah, it should. Yeah. A little typo. Does anyone have a problem with Wednesday? We just figured the event's going to be here. 
so on Tuesday. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to try to meet. Do I hear a motion to approve 6 Alpha with the caveat that is moving from October 4th to October 5th? So moved. So moved by Mr. Turner. Second. Second by Mr. Thomas. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Okay. 6 0. Six Bravo, consider, discussing, or approve Joe McDonald's building permit at 105 South Vale. Uh, folks, the next couple are tabled items that have been there a while. Um, so we'll, I thought we would put a couple of these at a time on the agenda. Um, I have had a couple of discussions with uh, Joe on these, and while he still has some plans, these are, uh, I'll say, um, old, and he needs to come back with something uh, slightly different. One of these had to do with uh, allowing him to build right there at Vale, and one was a proposal to buy a piece of the property over there. That is Bravo and Charlie. I heard a motion on Bravo to make a motion we deny a second. So I've got a motion to deny by Richard Hollis second. Any other discussion? All in favor of denying six Bravo? Any opposed? Any abstention? It is denied 6 0. Do I hear a motion on 6 Charlie? Make a motion we deny. And I second. Motion by Turner, Shadden second to deny. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Denied 6 0. 6 Delta, consider discussing or approve the building permit for Kathy Torrance at 701 North Alley. Make a motion we deny. Motion by Turner to deny. Second. Second by Jim Finstrom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Robin, do we have an abstention or? I was just going to have a little discussion about it. But, I mean. So are we going to have her come back or are we just denying it? She built the structure. So the history, history that is, she, she came in and asked, and, and Richard was, well, you were here, Jim was here. Yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong. She came in and asked for the building permit. We tabled it because we asked her to come back with a survey. Right. And a couple weeks later, the structure went up. And we've met as a council to discuss actions around that. But in the meantime, this has been tabled the whole time. So yeah. actually, we, this is but denying it we're denying her permit as it is so in my opinion that if there's any action forward this gives us we couldn't do anything additional until we deny it. That's good. okay and for you all that are new the city did pay for a survey to determine whether she was building yes. on the right of way so with yes. that understanding i i i agree to deny. Okay. All in favor of denying? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? 6 0. Thank you. Wait, I abstain. You abstain. Oh, sorry. 5 1. Apologies, Will. I did not see the hand. Of course, I didn't have my glasses on, so. No problem. No problem. Just one abstention? Yes. Okay. 6 Echo. Consider discussing or approve budget amendment transfers in the police department fund for previously approved expenditures. So before we go through uh, each one of these, uh, now we can't approve them all at the same time. To Councilman Turner's point a couple meetings ago, we should be doing this as we go. We will be doing this as we go. That's on me. Uh, we could anyone could have spoken up, but you know at the time we were just rolling through. We were early enough. We're underspending. Um, handily in the budget but we should stay up on top of this so we will going forward we shouldn't have to do a catch-up like this could i just make a comment yep i would like to see now that our chief has some additional help in patrolling and all um some grant applications going out for a lot of this you know at least apply you may not get the grant but I, I, I'd like to see some attempts at, at grants. 
in the future. You're right, and, and we kind of brought that up last meeting that some most grants are going to take over a year to get, but let's be putting in for them now for items down the path. Um, uh, we, we had actually asked uh, Tino, Richard, in the last meeting to put together, uh, I'm going to call it a Gantt chart, but it's basically all the equipment that we may have to purchase for officers, vehicles, the patrol or the police department itself, and kind of put a timeline around it. Like these are good for five years, then they expire, or these generally last X number of years. Some of this stuff, if we can buy, if we need 10 and we can buy two a year for five years, we're not hit that hard. So the, you know, only Hollis really understands most of the equipment and that sort of thing and the life of the equipment and how it's gauged and what, what the wear and tear factors are and that sort of thing. So we've asked Tino to put together something to at least educate us and future councils on, here's, what, here's how we should be buying this stuff a little at a time instead of waiting all at once. Now, to Tino's defense, the waiting all at once has been, you, you know, usually, hey, we're out of money or we don't have enough money of past councils. So. Uh, and I, I was, of course, I was not here that meeting when this was approved, but, uh, or I probably would have said that at that time. But uh, uh, I will say I am concerned about spending over $70,000 out of a budget line item. Uh, and only a few of these were, or maybe a couple, were expired items. Uh, I've just never been one to spend money just because you just got money in the budget. And uh, frankly, we have spent a lot of money on the police department and we haven't spent a lot of money on the rest of the city. And I've got some concerns about that. Okay. And like I said, we've asked, you know, we'll talk about that in the budget. And, and we've kind of talked to Tino about putting together a Gantt chart so we're better educated on how we can be buying this stuff as we go budgeting year in, year out for certain stuff. So, um, I'll say that in the past they've had less detail into some of the needs um so you can't really say it was budgeted or whether it wasn't budgeted so I, I think the more intelligence we build in the better the the other thing uh concerns me is that there were no more than one bid for these which and i'm in my i know it's for different things but Basically, you spent over seventy thousand dollars at one time for items that would get one source bids, uh, and I know that some of these don't have to go to one source. So, that, yeah, probably mixed basket. Some some probably are one source, and pro yeah, some probably some, are not. Some could be, but. Uh, I just, I believe that we've got some issues there. Uh, just giving everything to one source, I promise you, you're not gonna get the best price. Okay. That's any, all I have to say. Any other comments on six echo? Uh, some of these were approved earlier this year. Some of these were just approved last week. Uh, I hear a motion to approve six echo, one through five as written. Move to approve one through five as written. I second. Motion by Jim, seconded by Will. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. I'll abstain. Okay. Okay, discussion items. Uh, Robin, we've got seven alpha core team. Sir. I'm sorry. Here. There was one other item that was in my packet. I don't know <clears throat> that was tabled, but it was in my packet. Yeah, operate, operate but it's alpha. not on the agenda. We, tried, we put it on an early agenda, and we're told that she has not reapproached the city for that. Okay. So you've got so this is that event's going to happen this weekend. This is just in case they come back and okay. need that. But gotcha. it was initially going to be on because I was under the impression we needed to 
Okay. Cut that and it was not. And I want to add to that too. Since the only event they're having, I mean, the only activity they're having is just the concert here in the tourism building, that um, they were told by the city that insurance was not necessary. So I just wanted to kind of get that out there. So uh, she won't be providing a certificate of insurance due to that fact. Okay. Since it's on in, in house here. Okay. Appreciate that uh, update. Uh, who told them that? I mean, I'm, I'm just. Asking. I don't know. I guess someone down at City Hall, but I mean, that's the way it is for the. And I, I agreed. You know, the um, community center had an event and insurance wasn't required. They weren't closing street. They're not closing streets or anything, and it's strictly here in this building. So, so do we require everybody who has an event in this building to have insurance? Mm -mm. Hmm. So, w would we require them to have? I one? mean, to my knowledge, we don't. Okay. I think I'm almost positive we provided for Toys for Tots casino night and for the crew. Uh, in here. So, Let's can come back. Um, and we're a 501c3 as well. So, you know. Well, I know uh, when Kathy Murphy had her girlfriend weekends here, she wasn't required to carry insurance. So, well, and weddings and receptions, and uh, it's something to consider down the road. I would say that it would be something to consider because of look at the liability. So how could we require, I, I don't mean to speak out of turn. I'm sorry if I am, but how would we require a wedding by insurance to use this facility? Well, my, my thing is, how can you provide anyone uh, to provide it and not provide right from someone else? Right, yeah, I guess that's, that's exactly what I mean. But isn't there such thing as a one day insurance to wear for uh, celebrations? Uh, gatherings and stuff like that you can sure i know the um school district someone was wanting to use their cafeteria for a reception after a funeral and they required that she get liability insurance for that event on their property because the way i'm understanding it and correct me if i'm wrong if if there's an event here let's say that there is a wedding and a fight break out somebody gets shot hurt killed who does it follow? Yeah, I couldn't tell you. It would um, probably, I mean, would it follow this? I just here? think, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. I, I, I just think we need to make sure we have a policy yes. that says how we're going to do this and for what. We can't pay favoritism to one group and not the other, in my opinion. No, and, I and the reason. And to add to it, I'm, I'm bringing this up now because this is probably something that we can look at as a policy going forward versus, you know, requiring it. Home. Okay. We'll look into it. Robin 7 Alpha, core team update. Um, in the future, if you would put um, the line item is strategic planning core team because not everybody knows what the core team is okay um we're in contact with texas target communities we have a zoom call every two weeks and we're working on the october 12th and 13th public meeting and the stakeholders meeting on the 13th um, so that's kind of the update there's a plan to uh for the leadership group to meet again on September 22nd, and that's nothing new. We've already talked about that. Uh, so I just mainly kind of reiterating what is coming up soon. And um, I'm hoping if any uh, restaurants are listening right now, uh, I'd like to get assistance from the local restaurants to help feed the public group that comes on the 12th, and I'll be reaching out to those those people as well. I've already had a few volunteer to to provide that and with maybe advertisement for their restaurant. So okay. Thanks, Rob. Uh, no executive session tonight, folks. Uh, thus no post executive session action. Jim. Move to adjourn. Motion by Jim to adjourn. Second. Second.
Second by Will. All in favor? Aye. Any post? We are adjourned 635. Okay, we're going to open budget workshop 635. Uh, what has been passed out to you guys are two things. Let's start with the main budget colored section. I took uh, feedback we had from the last meeting uh, and some emails throughout the week. Um, we got some clarification on a couple things from Mr. Trailer and kind of updated this for uh, where we stand as of today. Now, guys, let's talk a little bit about a schedule. So, Melissa, help me out of the ditch here. Today's the 30th. We will have a budget hearing on September 19th, which is a Monday. And that's one of those folks we will open up the budget hearing. Um, you know, hasn't been a whole lot of public uh, people or well, public show up to those hearings in the past, but the budget will be on display available for review at City Hall for two weeks prior. Is it two weeks? Okay. So we have to have the budget hearing and the tax rate hearing on different days. That's not been done that way in the past, but you know we're going to do that this year. So the next day, which is our regularly scheduled Tuesday, the 20th meeting, we will have not only our regular council meeting, but we will have the tax rate hearing and approve the tax rate, approve the budget, We'll approve the budget on Monday. The night before, okay. Unless we choose to, uh, we have to take action on Monday. So our action would be either to um, hold off on approving it to the next day or to go ahead and approve the budget. Okay. We'll have the hearing and we'll have it on the agenda to approve Monday if we so choose to approve it Monday. We'll go ahead and put it on the agenda for Tuesday in case we do not approve it but if Monday. We if we increase but, the tax rate, we have to have two hearings, right? Well, so we have a proposed budget rate that's already there. That's the no new tax rate, correct? The 45, well, 44? we didn't choose the no 40. new. Okay, we chose the flat from last year. Right. 45, bunch of zeros. Okay. So we can't go any higher than that. Right. That's the ceiling. If we were to do anything lower, it would be at the budget, it would be at that meeting and we would hold public hearing, propose it, vote on it, right. move forward. Yeah. We just can't increase past that. That is correct. Without two tax hearings. Correct. Okay. And so then Tuesday, regular, regularly scheduled meeting, budget hearing, budget approval, I'm sorry, budgets the night before, tax hearing, tax approval, Ratify the taxes. Ratify the taxes. Okay. So there's a couple, I'll, I'll just say static things we're going to have to do on that Tuesday. Uh, Monday should be a shorter meeting, but we, uh, we do have to separate the two. That hasn't been done in the past. I don't know if it was a miss or whether it's a new, it's a new look. Okay, I'm being told it's new. So back to this. Um, if you look at the front page, again, the kind of pink colored is year over year budget. You can see the first white column of better or worse is where we are looking at ending this year. So the first column, TTM is trailing 12 months. So that's where we are projecting to finish this year versus budget is the better or worse column. The adjustment September, uh, August, September allows us to look at anything that happened last year, August, September, that's not going to happen again this year. And that's this, this front page rolls up from all the budgets behind it. The orange column, the first orange column is where we think we're going to end up this fiscal year. And then the next green column would be the adjustment would add, which adds to or takes away from the orange to equal the red. And then you've got a couple prior year comparisons to the right in purple. So what this tells you folks is this year we are looking at uh, underspending by $255,000 net. 
which is 150,000 better than plan. That's the trailing 12 months. Where we think we're going to end the full year is actually $408,000 better. The proposal next year is a deficit of 265, which is really the street campaign. So we just approved the street campaign. Um, I know they've ordered or they're going through the process to order hot mix and all that sort of thing, but odds are we're not going to be paying any of that this year because it would have to be work done and paid in September. So this has us paying all of that next year. So it's in next year's budget um, and it would be above what we would have against next year's revenue. Questions on that? So, all right. We already have that 264 in our coffers. Yes. Okay. Because the bottom orange of 408, I'm rounding, 407,000. That's the net cash going into our coffers at the end of this fiscal year. Yes. Okay. And I'm saying 265 of that is just going to roll into October, November, you know, as we pay those pay the bills of the street campaign. And the next year's budget has next year's street campaign fully encapsulated in it, meaning we're going to bid it out earlier, get started earlier, finish it earlier, and basically bid it, work it, and pay it all in next year's fiscal year. This year we got a late start, so the spend is actually falling out into ne next year. Okay. So we're basically putting, putting away money this year, and going to spend it the first, I'll say, two to three months, call it two months after. Uh, but so that means next year we're going to be in the same situation? No, next year we start bidding earlier. When we get to the streets, I'll show you. Okay, but so we're, we've got enough money in the street budget. Yes, sir. Okay, that's, so yep. that's actually the reason we're over. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. And that, and and at this point, you can look at that and say that's the only reason we're over. Yeah. Everything else is going to net out. Right. So if you go, <coughs> excuse me, if you go to the front the first page after the title page, <coughs> top center says administrative revenue. And so any on any of these pages, guys, just a reminder, you can look at that top center and it'll tell you which budget you're looking at. So again, same flow. TTM is where we've done the last 12 months. The first red column's budget next to it. So the trailing 12 months says we're 186, trending to be 186 better. Um, there's a, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're saying we're going to be 2.54 million at the end of this year, which is a little bit above this year's budget. Kind of calling it flat. It's twenty thousand budgeting twenty thousand dollars more next year, and you can kind of see to the right. Uh, and actually, Melissa you brought up a good point earlier, guys. The comments to the right, halfway through the comments, you see where it says CARES Act funding. That is not CARES Act. Which one is that, Melissa? The American Rescue Plan. Thank you. I'll change it. And that's just saying we got half of it last September and we're going to get the rest of it. We didn't get it since the last meeting, did we, Melissa? Okay. So we should get that in the month of September, which is the second half of that 417 uh, from the feds. So if you go to general funds expenses on the next page, I'll just go to the hard facts. We look like we're going to spend about $820,000 which is better than plan. We are budgeting about 913, and a lot of that being salaries. We've got, I did add in um, the presentation that Colleen had added for tables, chairs, trash cans, and that sort of thing. I did add in uh, a list of technical items for Hugh, and we are going to partner with Jetco on that. They put some money in their budget for uh, TV type thing, projector type thing. 
um, until we all go shopping together and figure out what's the best piece of equipment for us to have um, that we can share and all that sort of thing. If anything, this is our portion that we can ante in uh, and probably get better, more reliable, more durable equipment. Um, having it here in this building, it, it's, it's, we're starting to run into a problem of well, where do we put it when we're not in here? Only so much fits in the, the uh, telephone closet and we can't put it all in Danielle's office every time we leave. So, you know, when there's a, an event here and you've got every room filled with people and food and drink and whatever, we can't have a big screen TV sitting anywhere. And we can't have it walking out the door. <laughs> that is correct. I have a quick question. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I was talking, I got a message from Colleen and, and she was asking about the, the uh, monies for the wish list of the stuff that, that you already budgeted in here. Is that money is going to be available now or because she didn't know exactly when it, it would be available for her to start spending to get. So I, I put it in this budget, which is October 1st forward. Okay. So um, I know she wanted to kind of pre-spend some stuff. I think we're just better off keeping it in next year because just because we're putting it in the budget doesn't mean we're automatically going to spend it. Okay. And the reason I'm asking it in this forum is because I wanted everybody to kind of be aware of, you know, where things is, how things is going. Yep. Good question though. But all that's going to be bid out and brought to us for right. Approval, right? right. Quotes and stuff. Now she yes. has a lot of quotes for that stuff already. Okay. Um, but I think we still need to have the discussion and I'll just use the chairs versus tables as an example. Most of the tables here are, well past their life. Uh, the chairs actually aren't bad if we were to clean them. So can we get away with cleaning them and using them for another five years? I mean, those are durable chairs. And the cloth is not in bad shape um, other than a couple. So can we clean them? I think we've gone beyond the life on these tables, so. <laughs> tables are definitely gone. Oh, yeah. Um, next one, guys, municipal court. Uh, nothing changed in here since last week. Uh, reminder, the only thing of note in here was a uh, raise for Lena because we have not touched that in four years. Next one's fire department. Again, the big item there is the $15,000 contingency because we never know what's going to break for them and such. So it's uh, relatively a pretty quiet budget. Uh, police department has a bunch of moving parts, but he is fully staffed at this point. Um, so you can kind of go through and see where we have added. Um, I think everything that was in here has been talked about in a past meeting. Rick, the only clarification I wanted to make, um, because I know you missed the last meeting or two, is down at Animal Control for FOJA. So they're, in effect, going down year over year by about 2,700 bucks. They have requested 25% more per year. So if you keep it simple and say they're getting 3250 a quarter, so they're getting 13,000 a year, they just want another 325, you know, 3250. But we had a one-time $6,000 item that's not gonna be a repeat. We actually just approved the budget move a second ago. So when you're going down by the six, going up by 3250, you're actually dropping some. Does that make sense? I still have a problem with not function by any means. I don't like that the county's not paying for some of this. And the majority, absolutely the majority of the animals that they collect are from the county. The ones that they deal with are from the county. That's not the responsibility of the citizens of Marshall, Texas. I mean, excuse me, Jefferson, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I said that. I can, I can build to Marshall if you want, but I don't think they're going to. Or Marshall, Texas either. Yeah, it's not the responsibility of the city taxpayers. Uh, it's, and, and I hate that. Uh, so I'm, I'm really concerned about I know, but basically we're doubling what the city's going to pay. Doubling. 
Yeah, I mean, if we're going from 3,200 to 6,400. No, 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 no. Sorry. We're going from 13,000 a year to 16.2. 16 okay. So we're adding basically a fifth quarter. Okay. Um, this we we paid for one time six thousand dollars this year. That's not a re we're not going to do it again. So, so we're only going. I mean, we're we're going down twenty seven hundred year over year. But part of that is we we're not going to repeat a six thousand. We're going to add thirty two fifty. Is is what is in where's, this number? Where's the six thousand? We paid a one time six thousand dollar. We just moved it in the budget a second ago, probably when did, February. Oh, that's for something that was yes. Yeah, but that doesn't count. That was I that's something they're not supposed to do again. That's what I'm saying. So, so they're really not going down. They're going up. Well, year over year, they're going down. No, net, net, net the funding. That six thousand dollars was not a repeat expense. I understand. It was one expense because of an issue. We're saying the same thing. We're presented different ways. Okay, but it's. I'm just saying that their you annual can't say that their funding's going down. No, their year over year spend is going down. There, our funding to them is going up. Okay. You're, you're, we're, we, we're, we're going to ignore the six thousand dollar one time. Okay. With if you ignore that, we're going up thirty two hundred dollars, thirty two fifty. And that's in the plan. Still gets to get voted on. We're just talking here. Okay. So budget workshops to paint some more detail. The debate can. I just know. I feel like, and, and I don't want to hinder them any more than we have to but some way or another there has to be some accountability as to what money is where this money is being spent if it's being spent on county dogs not city dogs or animals i'm sorry then that's wrong well i don't they, think if they we... want to quit doing the county stuff then so I'm just, I just have issues with, with Is it a way for us to work with the county? Oh. Maybe. Not gonna budge. <laughs> the, the county's got strong opinions. Um, they direct all their dollars elsewhere and aren't going to spend any money um, or time on this problem. Everyone understands it's a city problem and a county problem. The county is bigger in land, county is bigger in population, county thus is bigger in dog and cat population. Um, I guess I look at this as when you look at FOGE's entire annual spend and you look at the 13,000 we're given, that's the comparison. Because I can sleep at night saying, short of us having a facility, which the city of Jefferson's nowhere close to putting a facility in place, short of us getting an animal control officer, which really wouldn't be one person, it would be training three people to do it so we would have round the clock type coverage. I feel pretty good about doing a, in this case, $16,000 funding. And I just look at it as the first $16,000 spent is local city issues, not county. Um, right off the top of my head, I don't know their annual budget, but let's say it's $100,000. Let's say it's $80,000. We're only doing you know, 20%, something like that. So that's how I look at it. I think we have to do something for funding. Short of having a, a animal control officer, we can say that's our investment in this problem. Right now our investment is, here's an annual, or I'm sorry, here's a quarterly check. They've been diligent at coming back and reporting on activities and dog numbers. I mean, they're, they're full of data. data. Uh, they're giving us good data on what they're covering. Um, you know, we can try to partner with the county. The county's got, you know, other bigger issues that they're directing their attention toward. That's the best way to put it. I understand that. But the dog or the animal population in the county is still their issue. Agreed. And, and I just don't think we're doing, maybe the city's not doing enough to say, go to the county and pony up. You know, and I, I'm not really up against against the three thousand dollar increase. I'm just fussing because I'm, you're fussing. I, I am, and, and I know y'all miss me, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, we all should show up at the commissioner's court. Yeah, I mean, we we're residents of the county. Well, let's do this. 
I, I'm explaining, I'm highlighting what's in the budget that's being proposed. When we get to the point where we have to approve their annual renewal or their quarterly or what have you, let's 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 do it on a meeting that Sharon has come and um, or whoever's going to present that time. Sharon's been doing it, but they can come and present, show us numbers, and um, we can ask some questions like we normally do. You know, this goes back to a complete separate issue. I've had an argument with some of their commissioners in the past. Everybody in this city pays county taxes. Everybody. Not a dime of their budget goes to inside the city. So what's wrong with there? So. Hmm. Are, okay. we in, are we Judge, in the county? Pick it up. What? Is it the city in the county? Uh, yes, it is. I agree. But we collect our own taxes. So if we shouldn't we be exempt from county taxes? Just because we live in the city limits, we don't get any county services. Huh? That's right. Well, no, we do. Where? I mean, so they do dispatch when when we're off the clock. Don't we pay them for that? We do. That's right. We pay them for it. We get the service. We pay for it. Yep. I get it. So we've already paid for it with our taxes, right? So why don't we go on the street <laughs> expense? I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> no. I'm, on, I'm on a soapbox with the county. That's okay. And Richard, Pretty the workshop to me is to start voicing his opinions yeah. and then once we have an approved budget we get to a point where we have an agenda item that we need yeah. to stick get our teeth into and stick our feet in the ground and make a call then we'll make a call i'm hoping somebody's listening to this thing or watching it from the county street expenses so looks like we're headed toward a 724,000, which is well under the million eighty um budgeting a million 140 for next year that is 400,000 now again Richard I'm highlighting a couple of these things for you just for right. your, your edification uh, some of this is headcount related and by the way streets and water department are kind of the same thing they have multiple vacancies right now both of them have two people in place each two vacancies each and they're asking for one more on top of that right um so this budget has those five positions all year so you know guys if you if you work in budgets you know that we can approve this next month in september we're not going to have these you know we're not going to have butts and seats october 1st so you know alan in this case alan would uh, be able to advertise be able to get you know uh, resumes be able to get people see if they can do what he needs them to do bring them on board that may very well be november december january february before we have those those hands in you know butts and chairs um the other thing of note in here actually across all budgets so hospitalization or you know call it health care is going up we will have a number sometime in september it is going to be somewhere between 13 and 18 percent I've baked in 18% in everybody's budget. And Melissa, you had that number per person per year per percentage, if that makes sense. I did in an email, but the 18% is 12,684. Okay. I might have put it. See if you can find that while I continue talking. So we built in the high mark, we built in the highest it might go. Again, we're going to approve a budget we may not have the answer from tml yet once we get that number we will know how much to take out of the, the hospitalization budget for all departments and put it in contingency for all those departments um if you go down to outside services about three quarters of the way down so this takes out our portion of the 70 or our seventy five thousand of the parking lot but then it adds a couple things one is twenty five thousand in ditch grading twenty thousand in brush acts and 40,000 in hot mix and concrete contracting. Richard, the theory there was the brush axe can basically go down the road and cut back. That exposes the ditch, so then we can clean, you know, re redo the ditches. And the hot mix and concrete is something we've talked about for some time, like multiple councils have on bringing somebody in that has the equipment and the know-how, uh, so we're not just doing cold mix and, you know, having a problem six months later. Um, this is kind of a four-year program, so it's uh, it's going to allow Allen to take the city, divide it into four, and be able to do 
this level of expense for four years cover the whole city. Now that doesn't mean we're gonna have to do that every year. It means for the first four years we will. And if we're doing better against the budget and he can accelerate and take a lop a year off in the future. But he, you know, the theory was he can cut back eight, nine, 10 years of growth. And <coughs> thus we only have to do this every five years, let's say. Does that make sense? So I'll say it's a lot of what we're spending is, is lack of spending in the past, eventually you've got to pay the pauper. Eventually you have to cut stuff. Eventually you have to, you know, reconcrete stuff. I have a question as far, I understand what you were saying about bringing in an expert uh, as far as the hot mix and concrete, uh, concrete, concrete contractor. Will they also be bringing in uh, expert as far as the, the ditch grading? You know, because as I understood from the previous uh, council meetings that they were going to be using a maintainer to clean the ditches and and make sure that they uh, make sure that they were all taken care of. So, are they going to be bringing in a? This is a, this is a service, is my understanding. Just so it, yeah, we don't have the equipment, we don't have the manpower, or we don't have the expertise. Okay, yeah. talking with Alan, he's it's hiring a somebody that has a maintainer. And okay, is okay, okay. I just want to make that. sure, yeah, yes. because you know, I mean, hey, if we're spending the money. You know, let's yeah. get the biggest bang for the buck. Absolutely. They'll pay to, to actually use the maintainer and the city will pick up the excess dirt. Okay. And get rid of it. Right. Okay, cool. Guys, if you go a couple lines down to street paving, this is where I wanted to kind of point something out. So if you go to the middle red column in the proposed budget, that's a five fifteen. That five fifteen is two sixty five from this year and two fifty for next year. Now, if we get into spring or if we identify a couple streets and what we have bid out comes in at 275, 280, whatever, and we can go find money to do that 275, 280. This year's actually, when we did our math, we were at 280, it came in at 265, low bid. So we actually got bid money given back to us, if that makes sense. So that's just me showing you guys this year's campaign that'll cash basis will hit next year is in here and then another 250 for next year is in here okay and we'll start talking about specific streets at a later date correct well every i've said this in a couple meetings and i think the best way to start is to go get the list that we started from just a couple months exactly. ago and there were a couple of those that didn't meet the criteria because i want to say they had sewer or water problems and until we fix those there's no sense in re repaving the top if we start there, I think I think it was another six or seven hundred thousand dollars. So uh, if we do two sixty five, I'll say this year that still leaves us four fifty to five hundred thousand to choose from that are that are valid streets. So that should be our starting point unless there's some sort of a street we missed that's just catastrophically wrong. Um, plus, I think, like I said, we owe it to the council members that just rolled off because they did some of this diligence up front talk to the citizens, identified streets, and then some of those streets are still on the list. They just didn't get approved with the first 265. Right. Okay, um, the last line item on that one, by the way, Grant Match wanted to talk through that. So there's 60,000 in here. We didn't spend any this year. The 27.5 and the 132 and Melissa, see how I split that out? So it's obvious we've got both in there. That's a match on something we've already got in motion. And then the remainder is um, contingency for next year, should we get a different grant to us. Can we go back a little bit on this page? Sure. One of the things I, I wanted to bring up, I wanted to ask about again is the, is, uh, the traffic signs, you know, and uh, what well, the repairing the traffic signs and all that, the, the budget, the budgeted amount for those okay so we've we've got two lines because we've got street signs and maintenance about a third of the way down at thirty five hundred dollars okay and then if you go two-thirds down right traffic signs barricades is six thousand so that's ninety five hundred dollars because we are trying to identify stop signs street signs the rail signs we can go to the railroad and that sort of thing but okay. um you know we need to know if it's a sign that used to be there and we're ju we just have the need to put it back, that's that's one bucket. 
if we have a need for a stop sign where one doesn't exist, process would be to identify with those to Tino and have his team. They they bought a strip, you know, we went when it was rollover bars. Um, it's probably twelve foot, not twelve inch. Mm -hmm. Okay, little budget joke there from last week, Hollis. Sorry. Yeah. The rumble strips we voted in, I called them 12 inches last week. Yeah, it's 12, 12, 12 foot. You're 12 not going to catch a whole lot of right. uh, yeah, 12 foot. B busting up tires with 12 inch strips. Oh. They're yeah. 12 foot. Unless you place it where just we right. Where we're going to put rumble strips. So we've got, we get calls from, you know, north and south on 59, and all we can do is wave at people as they come through. Okay. So, um, but I guess what I'm saying is the um, uh, we, we've got equipment that will be put at intersections that we believe need stop signs where there's never been one. Now, one thing is to get the police's uh, opinions because it's habitual complaints from citizens on, hey, there needs to be a stop sign here. Hey, people blow through here. or Hey, blah, 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 blah. But we're going to do it right. We're going to use the equipment that Tino bought. If there's never existed a stop sign, and we think there's needed, if okay. that makes sense. Well, the reason, yeah, I was then bringing it up because on MLK, there's a there's a school on one end near 49, and then there's a school. There, in fact, there's three schools all together on MLK. But on, the, on one portion of it, of it, there is no school zone signs. There is no speed limit signs. You know where there, whereas there is on the other end. And so I just wanted to make sure that the funds that was designated will address that air, that problem. It, it can address that problem. Yes. Remember, we've still got to cobble together a list from all the wards before right. we see right. how big this pie is. Okay. I just wanted to and then we've got to prioritize. Okay. Uh, because to me, the simplest one would be stop signs that used to exist that are no longer there, stolen, faded, what have you. Because there's a couple signs that are just flat oh, yeah. out white signs, and they should be red. Got you it. Know, Texas Sun, got to love it. Uh, those are the simple ones. The harder ones are going to take time because, you know, like in the past – couple years we've had Tino do you know three and four week studies at for streets to okay. test well he's only got one unit so it's going to take a while to go through and do even if we do two week tests we can only do so many throughout the year so we're going to have to see what the need is first and then see how simple it is to put up street sign stop sign school sign speed limit sign all of the above we're talking to Alan you know take a stop sign a stop sign installed is kind of a hundred bucks Right. It's going to be, you know, 70 ish bucks for the sign, you know, 20 or something for the pole and a little bit for the concrete. Now, if you're going to be doing a couple all, all on the same day, maybe we can get a benefit on the concrete and that sort of thing. But if you look at 100 bucks, you know, this, this can make a pretty good dent. But what we have in next year's budget, I don't envision that solving our total problem. I think it's, it's going to take a couple years. You know, going through and identifying and going through and doing what we can each year. But it's going to take a couple of years to catch up from past year's negligence, if not keeping up. Okay. Could I ask a question real quick? Sure. The two mowing contracts, how are those different? There's mowing contract and then three lines down toward the bottom is mowing contract city property. I can't tell you I know the difference in the two. Melissa, do you know the difference in the two? I'm going to have to pull it. And look. I mean, I know we pay them to. I know we pay them both to uh, the same company, but it's two different contracts. Um, we can. Well, let me let me get an answer for you. I'll, I'll email it out. So, is this is our city not mowing any of the no. properties now? We at all? we don't know. We, okay. That is one hundred percent. Now the city mow, city mows the right of way on Watson Street by the railroad tracks. Um, street right of ways are handled by the brush hog. I mean, we've, we 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 yeah. do have the brush hog, but not out. Yeah, I mean the brush hog. I wouldn't call that grooming. But, at one time, yeah. At one time, we mowed the uh, damn it, the park down here. Uh, Lions, Lions Park. 
No, 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 no. Down by the river. Hmm. What's it called? The riverfront. <laughs> Tango Riverfront. Yeah, Park. Columns. The Columns yeah, Academy. Col what the Collins is. Uh, yeah, that's I still mean, that's 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 far now. Okay. So I'll find out what the difference on uh, contracts is. Good question. And on the grant match 2016, can we add a line item to the water sewer for the 27.5 and the 13.2? Does that need to be in sewer? Yes, because that's what we just uh, approved at the last meeting with okay. SPI. I think we've traditionally had grant match all in one place, so I just need to create one in. Uh, yeah, okay. I can create an account. You create the account, I'll move it in here. Okay. It, well, it won't show up until I enter the budget, so we'll okay. just need to add a line item over there. Let me ask something. On the water bills, there's an additional charge that everybody gets that's paying back a grant or a loan or? It's not a grant. It's a loan. It's a loan. It's when we so did the are those funds that are collected to pay back that loan, are they held separately or are they commingled in with the general fund? That's something I've been complaining about since we've done it. Melissa, do you know if every water bill that's has separate. an every water charge. bill has a has an additional charge. Twenty five. It's twelve fifty for water, twelve fifty for sewer, a total of twenty five dollars. And I have harped on this for years we did that specifically for paying back that uh um, bonds yeah. the bonds okay. um and it was a like a 40-year bond and uh, we are lumping all that money into that rather than putting it in a separate should be a separate revenue item we definitely pay the different bonds out separately in expense, but I yes. wouldn't think it, I wouldn't think it'd be a big deal in starting to put it in there. We have, have to, to go we'd have to go backwards. And, yeah, and that was part of the issue too, because my constituents have said, "What's going to happen when this is bought paid for? You're still collecting." So. That's something we need to really look at and say, well, we paid this much to it. And I can tell you right now, I do believe, and I haven't looked at that lately in the past few years, but we were paying more than what we had to based off of the amount. But I'm not sure we were paying enough based on how much we were collecting. Okay. So. Why don't we let us look into it and see how it's. Another thing I'd Flowing. like to find out, is there unspent bond money that we haven't used yet? Is there something left in that fund that we haven't drawn from? Not, no, actually, I think we spent more than what I, I may be. Yeah, there was a city contribution correct. to that. The bond would have been, I mean, call it a loan if you want, but it's, it's, it's a loan back by the five bond. Million, a little over $5 million, 5.2 or something like that. I'd like, Gosh, I'd I like to see what. the in and outs on that and see, you know, if there's additional money there that we haven't even used yet, where that stands. Okay. Come to the office if I can tell you right where all of that stuff is at. Okay. And you're more than welcome to go. So guys, just move this along, visitor promotion. Um, this ties to the uh, uh, tourism, tourism budget that they presented. So. They budgeted this year to be uh, revenue of 210. Uh, they look like they're headed to 195, although I, I don't know if they've seen this month's check. Uh, they flattened it down to 205. So no real magic there. Visitor promotion expenses, again, it ties to what uh, their budget is, ties to their line items. You can see that uh, they're projecting to be about 177 versus the uh, 210 budget 
uh, which is good because now if they think they're only going to do 195, um, they're still well underneath their revenue, which is a good thing. And we just held uh, held it flat at 205 for next year on spend. So 205 in, 205 out. Nothing really big there. Water sewer revenue, and this is where um, we've got million four seven was the plan. Looks like the last twelve months has been a million four four five. Uh, so I'm going to call that right up, right on plan. Maybe it's a little a smidge under. Um, with some of the uh, buildings uh, and houses being refurbished, we're going to have. Uh, a little bit of an uptick there uh, ver versus a vacant building, uh, not having water and sewer and that sort of thing. So I added a little bit of money. Um, really kind of aligns it to kind of where we were tracking a year ago. And there's no real magic there either. On the water sewer expense, again, this is that Two headcount in place, two vacancies, asking for one additional. So we'll see how quickly we can get ramped up there. Uh, this is where I will add the grant money from the street department. Melissa, I'll just move it over. And this year's budget here was a million four four. Looking like we're coming in at a million four six. Budget's going up to a million five three, but a lot of that is headcount related. Now there is a non headcount related item in here, about two thirds of the way down in, in outside services. There's a $30,000 saw cut street work. And that was, instead of going to a spot where there's a hole and doing the best we can to dig around the hole, it is to saw it in a square and do it the right way. Um, so this will be kind of a combination between this work and you know maybe the streets uh, hot mix contractor, that sort of thing. Any questions there? If you'll notice that the expenses, there was zero for the mowing contract city property. So undoubtedly, we're not charging anything to that account. To the water. To water sewer. To water, water sewer. sewer. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was a misaligned account that was set up under the wrong okay. department. Well, that that shouldn't even be because we do our own out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on this? The other thing I'd like to and it's not necessarily a question but maybe uh on the police department. Yep. The it was on the revenue. Maybe. So, did you mean that the administrative revenue? Actually, maybe actually it wasn't the revenue because it. It doesn't delineate all that, so it would be on the expenses. Okay. Uh, the let's see, let me find it. It's the actual in the. Uh, well, if you give me the topic, I can tell you where it is. Maybe. Seem like we ended up going up fifty thousand. Maybe that. Maybe it is on administrative. Uh, yeah, it's it's the revenue for municipal fine court fines. We're saying we're going to get ninety-seven, which is fifty thousand more than what we. But I see that we're showing that we've got 82, but we're saying we're basically going to get 
another 15 from what we yeah the last the last couple of years have been high 80s so 87 was two years ago this year was actually 47. Okay. so um, it it doesn't have anything to do with the budget necessarily as much as I would be interested to know how that compares to other cities our size. Because hmm. I think it's severely under. Give me a sec. And it's kind of proven out that we were collecting more in the past. We'll look into that, Richard. Yeah, please. Yep. So, folks, this is where we're at. Um, a lot of detail. Um, I think a lot of proactive planning. Um, Richard, one thing we said a week ago was, uh, and we had Alan and Tino here in the room, um, we've been underspending the last couple of years by, you know, 400 plus thousand dollars every year. And to think that anything we put in the budget, we're going to spend the whole thing. You know, we're challenged to get all the work done that, you know, is in any budget we put together. That's mainly because surprises happen every week. It's just like any other profession you're in, stuff happens on a Monday, and that prevents us from doing stuff. But I think between, you know, the headcount stuff, which we're going to discuss in just a second, and um, some of the proactive things for the streets and, and sewer, if the citizens don't see us well, if the citizens don't see progress in streets progress in ditches progress in brush cutting back and stuff they don't they, you know they wonder where the money's going so if we start doing proactive things that i think will be very visible to the citizens they, they'll get it they'll see that we're spending money on the right stuff rather than just letting things lag um so that's just a kind of a proactive this is i'll just say there's a proactive budget you know, Alan is proactive adding, you know, filling roles and adding a role. He's proactive in bringing some of the third parties because since I've been in this chair, lots of people have given, uh, whether it's Tino or, or, or Alan, advice on, hey, can we get a guy that does this? Can we get a guy that does that? If we don't have the skills in-house, this budget allows us to do that. It allows us to go get third-party contractors where we don't have the equipment or uh, skill set to do it. Okay. I, I know I missed the last two, but uh, we're about to go through that. Go through it. We, uh, this is something we haven't been through as a group yet. Okay. So, guys, if you go to the other sheet, this is each department, and this is each position, each department. And this kind of rolls through. You start at the left, currently hour rate, which converts into an annual rate, uh, proposed increases, and it just really kind of goes to the right. And everything to the right is kind of calculated based on percentages that we have built in on either uh, trended history or uh, compliance related and that sort of thing. So the real uh, topic, and, and I know it says alderman, alderman, I took those off because those don't hit uh, payroll. You know, they hit, they hit uh, just uh, city council budget. So in this front page, this has the uh, two people that are salaried um, at a $2 raise and the administrative assistant that we just brought on is flat because we just brought her in. Flat meaning zero raise. So this kind of takes you from current hourly rate, add $2, annualize it, and then what it does to health care taxes, et cetera. If you so, see the bottom of the current rate, just to show a comparison, the 178.8, and then you look at the 2022-2023 rate, the difference, you may say, well, how can we be given raises if we're going down? And that is because we don't have the city administrator in here, except for the first, is it 10 days? I think, yeah. something like that, seven days. So year over year, dollars going down. But a year from now, it would be up in that 178 range. Municipal court, I already kind of mentioned, we haven't done anything for Judge Pope. So this adds 6%. What, um, 
And I'd just like to see this where we see what percentage each person this presents to each person. I, I know the two dollars. I know what a three percent does. You want to know what you want to know what two dollars is percentage wise? Yeah. Uh, can do that. I, I know I've slept, but who's the accounting officer? So this was printed off of our system as the categories that are entered into our system, and that would be Lori. Okay. <laughs> it uh, has her listed as okay. the accounting officer. We're going to get her a badge. <laughs> you know. But this, uh, and Amy's on a different budget, which is why you've got basically Melissa and Lori on this front page. Again, Judge Pope's at the bottom. We can add a column in here, Richard, to give the equivalency. I mean, 3% is 3%, but what is $2 do? Yeah. Well, we can add that. If you go to the second page, folks, now the police department, follow me on my math. So we did adjustments to some of these folks because they were on staff back in December-ish when we did that. Um, but others were not. So if they were just brought on, they're not going to get a full 3%. They're going to get something less because they're only going to get a prorated is what it's called, prorated raise. If they've been here all year, they will get the full 3%. Uh, Tino's is a little different. We, If you recall, we did the five-year, thousand-year, and the 3%. So that is baked in here on, on his line item. And we can add, again, the percentage column to give an equivalency. That would be 3% first and then the 1,000, right? It would be 3% on the existing plus 1,000. As opposed to the juxtaposition. Yeah, right. Point taken. Uh, street Department, um, these people are uh, current employees. Two of these are new roles. And the third one, we have bringing them in at the dollar range that we're moving these people up to, if that makes sense. So you go to the 2022-2023 hourly rate of 12. Two of those guys, we're having to give them $2 raises to get to 12, but we're going to bring in that new person at the 12, assuming they're at that skill level. And the other two are actual bodies we can point at. And all of, all, all of these listed as laborers are, uh, this is because right I at, know that the, the person that was making the 12.68 is actually an operator this is, as of now. Yeah, this is right out of the system. So if we yeah. haven't changed it in the system, if we made them an operator, I don't know when that was. Right. Was that a couple of years ago or? Uh, I don't remember. Melissa, can you check with Alan on that? I, if we need to uh, change the title, that'd be great. I think it would just show that there is, that's the reason they're getting. There's a difference in those two. Yeah. Uh, visitor promotion, I just did the 3% and uh, one of those people is, or one of those roles is part-time, and one of those roles is more than part-time. So that's the discrepancy in current annual rate and that sort of thing. Uh, water sewer, again, you've got the first five are people, I'm sorry, the first four are people that are currently in those roles at $2 a piece. The fifth is a new role, but we're bringing them in at that $12, and the other three are are the other three new roles? Not new roles. Oh. Yeah, those are extra roles down there. In, hold on a second. Melissa, we've got four bodies that are currently occupied, or four roles that are currently occupied. We were going to add the one. What are the bottom two? We have um, these vacant ones. And then we were going to add. Oh, two vacant. You're right. Two vacant. Add one. And it says overtime, guys, but we zeroed out everything. So ignore that. But I don't think they would get the 3%. Because we didn't right. do any increase for the 
vacant or street. Um, they're not really getting the 3%. If you look at the 2022, 2023 hourly rate, they're all $12 at the bottom. They're all the same annual rate. So, so you can just cross that out. Yeah. We'll edit that label. So guys, again, this is a combination of stair step raises to try to get our people up to a marketable position. Not to say that this will solve the gap to attract a whole lot of people, um, but you got to start somewhere. We can't just go and give five and six dollar an hour raises and you know to attract new people and have, have our other people sellers less. So, so this is a stair step. To try to get us more market, you know, more marketable, where people will look at Jefferson as a place to come and work for streets and sewer water, you know, what have you. Now, timing-wise, this all typically goes into effect October first. So, I and I would plan on the Tuesday, September twentieth, our regularly scheduled September meeting, to have these on the agenda because in the same meeting we would have the budget. Thus, we can still approve this and it can still go into effect October 1st. That's the plan. Questions, thoughts, something we're missing? When, I like it. When was the police officer's rate changed? I can't remember. I, I thought it was December or January. That's quite a, yeah. Okay. And at that point, it was Tino plus two. We've added three more. We added one in March, one in April, one in July. Yeah. I think. We just increased the, the base pay is what we did for the police officers themselves. Yep. It, I called a stair step. We increased uh, the base and we still allowed them the 3% at year end. So going back to that one, I, I looked at it. It shows that uh, I'm assuming the S means salary, right? And H is hourly. Yes. What two officers do we have that are salary? So you've got a sergeant that I believe is salaried. Um, one of these, though, is Christie, which that's I believe the is secretary. Hold on, but I yes, that's the dollar fifty. The I'm listed as hourly on this. I'm not sure yeah. the difference. Uh, I'm not yeah, sure we, which officers would be considered as salary. I'm not, I'm not sure what the difference would be, other than we. I know we've got one sergeant, and the others aren't. But, but that doesn't that actually, doesn't explain the second. I didn't know that they were actually salaried. I don't know that they are. Um, because they're, they're hourly. The system has a field for hourly or salary, but it also uh -huh. has two fields for um, your hourly rate. And you can tell it if you want it to pay by the hour, hourly rate or the salary rate. So I think that hourly is and salary is just that it's it's saying what it is not pulling when they get paid um, from that field to pay them they're being paid hourly and they're not being paid a flat rate like a salary person would be and I think that those were all automatically in there before I got here so I don't know why they yeah. are the way they are let's ask Tino and we'll clean that up I mean we might yeah, as well have it consistent may, in the system yeah he may not even yeah I, I, I don't think it does anything but let's let's right. be consistent and the only other issue I have with that is the difference between a one, two, and a three percent. I mean, I know it's probably because it's they're brand new. Prorated. Okay. So where somebody, where we had officers that were here all 12 months, they're eligible for the 3%. Where someone came in halfway through, they'd only be eligible for a percent and a half. Where we just brought somebody on in July, they're going to be here July, August, September, quarter of a year, so they'd be good for 0.75 percent. And I'm making up percentages because I don't know their start dates. So it's a it's a prorated 
calculation on the 3%. Okay. If someone came here in March and we don't give them anything, they should have gotten a percent and a half. Right. So it's just the prorated factor. Okay. So we'll add the percentage equivalency column. We'll check with Tino and get consistent on the salary hourly. We'll check with uh, Alan on the operator title and we will clean, <coughs> clean up water sewer fund. Um, those last three, those that say 3%, they should all be stricken. So can I ask Richard, yes. the um, operator in the street department, so we, we would have two operators, one in water sewer one and one in, in water street. Water sewer. Okay. Yeah. Not, and Alan is not an operator. He's the- No, he's, okay. yeah. It's I just showing him as superintendent. Wanted to make sure I was understanding you correctly. Um, so, and that's another thing. All of his funds are being paid out of the water sewer rather than 50-50. This is the time to allocate that. Well, um, the uh, street department is paid out of the consolidated cash in the general fund. Right. And then the water sewer is paid out of the water sewer fund out of the consolidated cash also. So the street department's not being paid from water sewer income. Right, I, under, I understand that, but you, you've got a superintendent that has both streets and saying. water and sewer. Yeah, so ideally, we ideally, you ideally the town's well, ideally the town's big enough. You have a water superintendent, and street superintendent. We used to do that. Well, when we got down to one. Yeah. It was whatever Alan was hired yeah. into. So well, and and where I'm headed with that, this is another thing I've hassled with all this these many years. Technically, water and sewer is a revenue based budget. Totally, I'm, I'm talking about revenue from the services. So. If you're setting water rates, water and sewer rates off of the expenses, it should reflect what the, it's, the expenses are for that department. And if you collect more than you uh, spend in the water utility funds, then technically you should have to lower your rate, lower the rate, or move some money over to taking care of uh, administrative fees for like the city secretary. Uh, and in the past, the uh, administrator. But Amy is paid for out of the, the water. But right, right now we're, we're kind of, we're not, we're not exactly right. Well, why don't we kick the tires on what some yeah. other smaller towns our size do and i mean let's not reinvent the wheel let's cookie cutter um, and bring maybe a proposal of here's what three towns our size do and here's how they account for it and if we can set something up that makes sense that makes that flow make sense more digestible yeah. we should probably clean that up i know when i was the public works director in marshall i was paid part out of both because i had multiple departments so based on a percentage of the budget. So whichever one's the most, that's where your pay is going to be, mostly. It's just something I think, if we're going to correct things the way they should be, and so that we can be forward with our taxpayers and our rate payers. I mean, and that's what I'm in. I'm talking revenue from rates, and then there's revenue from taxes sure so. well and all that does is shift the burden to tax away from water so your water bill will be lower taxes will go up it yeah, will baby. well your balloon doesn't the balloon you push in the balloon it's 100 bricks tall you're saying let's say it's 50 50 today but you're really saying well it really should be 60 40. but you should do that see because right now should. property owners uh, aren't paying their fair share because uh, the water utilities pay in some of 
that experience. So I, I think it's just the way that Jefferson's always done it. Let's look at it, yeah. kick the uh, tires, and clean it up. It's because it, yeah, it, it just never was. Actually, we used to have a street department and a completely separate. But that's been back when we had enough people, too. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, question, comments? None. 740, adjourn.